Hi and welcome to another gaming video and in today's video I want to talk about whether gaming has gone as far as it can and I'm gonna sort of spin that onto more onto consoles really so gaming is a huge industry more so in the last sort of 20 or 30 years but I can't help thinking that gaming and games consoles have, have peaked uh, they're, they're reaching a point where nothing is new since the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 area consoles of and gaming really haven't really progressed except in in graphics the ps4 and the xbox one they did push the graphics and the resolution and the speed further and it was amazing but has the ps5 and the xbox series x really brought anything new except better graphics there are so many people that are holding on to a ps4 and an xbox one because the games are where they want, the graphics are decent enough, and the Series X and the PS5, at least initially, have struggled to, to, to pull last-gen users across. Okay, so Mortal Kombat 1 on the Xbox Series X, it looks absolutely stunning. It is absolutely amazing. Um, my son's got it, he's a big Mortal Kombat fan, and... I was watching it, and yes, you, you cannot fault the graphics, they are absolutely sublime. But it's still Mortal Kombat. It's still the same game principle from the uh, Super Nintendo and Mega Drive era. It's just been beefed up. It's just been maybe more characters, maybe a few more moves. Um, but it's it's really the graphics that have been uh, uh, progressed in that time. Same with Grand Theft Auto 6 or GTA 6. It looks gorgeous, what we've seen of it so far. It looks absolutely huge. But isn't it just a bumped up GTA San Andreas from the PlayStation 2 era? Bigger maps, better graphics. Okay, I'm, I'm probably simplifying it a little bit more. There is a huge leap between GTA San Andreas and GTA 6. But it's the same principle gameplay uh, without bringing really too much into it outside of the, the the fancy effects that you get or yeah yeah it, it, it's, it's just the fanciness and the, the added little tiny bits that they put into things like GTA 5 GTA 6 that make people want to buy it but it's still the same principle from the early GTA games Nintendo do try to to bring something new you got the Wii had its motion controllers, the Wii U had its uh, gamepad, the Switch is a, a hybrid console, Xbox tried with Kinect, uh, that sort of motion thing on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, Sony tried with the PS Move on the PS3, um, but nothing has really sort of matched Nintendo's innovation in those areas, and Nintendo need innovation because they don't push out high-end consoles or high powered consoles uh, they rely on their uniqueness their their selling point um, instead of just pushing graphics which is a good thing the ps5 is doing well sales wise but the xbox series x not so and i think people are just tired of the novelty of how they're just pushing the graphics side without much to back up in terms of gaming like i said ps3 ps4 ps5 it really is just a graphics jump rather than gameplay itself. So you've got things like uh, VR. Now VR has made massive inroads and um, it is a different direction for gaming. It's more than just sitting at a console with a controller in your hand staring at a screen. Whether that is a standalone thing like uh, the Oculus Quest or whether you're going down the PSVR or PSVR 2 route, VR is a different direction for for gaming it, it really just takes your bog standard gameplay console gameplay and adds something new to it um, th and it's an area that so far uh, xbox has failed to get into and and perhaps that's some of the reason why the series x isn't doing so well because sony ventured into the vr market done it quite well the ps vr was a little bit clunky uh, I'm sure they've improved that with the PS VR 2, but at least it's it's an avenue that they're going into. On a side note, uh, if we look at the Xbox Series S, that has done very well. It's the the smaller cut down version of the Series X. It, it reinforces that, 
Not everybody wants wow, fancy graphics. They just want the latest game. And if you can get the latest game on a cheaper console with really just... It is just the graphics side that, that are different with the uh, Series S and the Series X. You're still getting Mortal Kombat 1. It just looks not as not as good on the S as it does on the X. But if graphics aren't the, your main thing, then... The, then the Series S is a good console and it has done very well and it is just proof that not everybody is after awesome graphics or that everybody likes good graphics but it's not the be all and end all of gaming so the future of gaming is an odd one what could the PS6 and the next Xbox whatever they're going to call it bring that hasn't already been introduced they can't just bring out a PS6 which yet again it's just a graphics bump or uh, an xbox series or whatever they're going to call it i don't even know if they've got a name and scheme for the next uh, xbox um, but they can't just bring out more powerful consoles that there, there, there needs to be something else nintendo also have to be very careful because we are on the cusp possibly in the next year or so of seeing the switch 2 and what they can't do is fall into that trap of just bringing out a more powerful console a more a faster console they need to carry on their innovation um, Nintendo have this weird habit of they bring out a console it does fantastic and then the next one sucks so you've got the Wii which sold about 100 million I think um, and then you've got the Wii U which sits at about 14 million I may be uh, maybe not quite correct on that but it's it's around that that much then you've got the switch which is Ooh, well over a hundred million, possibly the second biggest selling console of all time. So they've got to be careful that the Switch 2 doesn't fall into the Wii U market. And the Wii U really was just a glorified Wii with enhanced graphics and uh, a bit better processing. So the Switch 2 needs to bring something new. And, well, that is really about it for this video. We We cannot just keep pushing consoles spec-wise. I mean, look at the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. They don't really bring much to the market that the 4 and the Xbox One doesn't accept better graphics, and people are getting tired of it. I've got children or grown-up children, and they're all gamers, so I asked them the question. I asked my oldest, who currently has a PS4, does a lot of PC gaming, but he still has his PS4, uh, why haven't you upgraded to a PS5? Um, and his answers were that one it is a bit of a faff to reinstall and move all your stuff across i get that uh, games consoles are quite big these days and transfer and everything across can take a little while um, the other one was that he was happy with his ps4 it, it might be a bit slower and the loading speeds might be not quite as quick but he's still happy with it that's a good thing um the ps5 is expensive currently here in the uk you look at about 350 380 i think uh, for a ps5 so he's quite happy using his ps4 there's still a lot of ps4 games that are coming out still games that come out for the ps4 and the 5 um with the one exception is the only reason that he would upgrade to a ps5 is for the new spider-man 2 so that's that's his reasoning for sticking with a PS4. Uh, I asked my daughter the same thing, and she, well, uh, why haven't you upgraded to a PS5? Because they're rubbish. That was her answer. They've got no decent games. So I think, uh, she's probably thinking along the same lines as my son, is that most of the games are still PS4, PS5, and anything that's PS5 exclusive she's not really interested in. She said the same thing. The only game that she would be interested in is the new Spider-Man 2. So that's why she hasn't upgraded her PS4 yet. Two of my sons have upgraded. So they've gone from an Xbox One to a Series X. So I asked them, uh, why did you upgrade to a Series X? And my oldest, well, my second oldest, he just wanted one. There was no particular reason. There was nothing that his Xbox One couldn't do that pushed him to upgrade to a Series X. He just wanted one, which is a, a good enough reason. Some people just like to have the latest console. And then uh, my other son, 
he's got one as well and his was a gift so that's the reason he's got one and there was a game that he wanted Mortal Kombat 1 which you can only play on a Series X this is one of the the, the newer games that are now starting to be Series X exclusive although they are Series S as well and so that's there there you go two people with uh, PS4s two people with uh, who had Xbox Ones. Those on the PS4 have decided to stay there, and my sons with the Xbox One decided to upgrade. But <sighs> the future of gaming is, I think, to make gaming more immersive. You've had things like steering wheels, and then you've got VR. So why not combine the two? I mentioned this to my son, and he said, oh, I think they have somewhere. Um, but a racing game where you are fully immersed and using a steering wheel and possibly pedals would make it just an absolute awesome experience for for racing fans i did read or uh, did see a, a story uh, of a, a, a bird simulator a bird vr simulator so you, you wear your vr goggles uh, and then you lay on this machine with your arms out uh, there's things underneath your arms which capture when you're when you're flying, there's wind blowing in your face. It gives you that real sense of, of flying. That is totally immersive and it would just make gaming so much better. And we seem to be going a little bit backwards. Uh, arcades in the 80s and 90s, they offered dedicated controls. Uh, something that my, my daughter mentioned, she's been into our local games arcade and you can you can sit on a bike so you feel like you're on a bike you've got your handles you've got the screen in front of you it just offers a bit more than sitting here with it in your hand with just a controller in your hand um you, you get a, a full experience uh things like the afterburner which you see in i think terminator or terminator 2 uh you sit you've got controls in front of you, a screen in front of you, a seat that moves. And it reminds me of these uh, simulators that you could go in. I don't think I've seen them recently, um, but like a roller coaster simulator. So you go in this cage or sort of unit and uh, you're looking at a screen, you sit on a chair and the whole thing moves with you. And it, it, it gives you that more immersive feel. I think that is the direction that gaming needs to go. Sitting with a controller in your hand is just getting dull and I mean, it's good for certain games, don't get me wrong, not sure I'd want to play a first person shooter in, in VR, I've, I've tried uh, Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot and Doom VFR, great, but for me, uh, although I am not a fan of VR, so um, it's, it's, that's my personal opinion, but I think, I think we need something more than just more powerful games machines, and uh, that is the, the future of gaming. So let me know what you think. Link, like, subscribe, enjoy.